Rick Moranis began his career as a radio DJ while he was still in high school, which led him to writing, producing, and being on air in his own show. He joined the Canadian TV series Second City Television, winning an Emmy for writing and portraying the character Bob McKenzie, which became the basis for the film Strange Brew, which he co-wrote, co-directed, and made his film acting debut. After starring in such film classics as Ghostbusters, Spaceballs, Parenthood, and the Honey I Shrunk the Kids franchise, Rick left big screen stardom behind. In 1997, Moranis began a long break from acting to dedicate his time to his two children, following the death of his wife. He has not appeared in a live-action film for over 25 years, although he did provide voiceover work for a few animated films. He has also released comedy albums and made appearances at fan conventions during this break from acting. More recently, Moranis has signed on to appear in a newly developed sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which will be called Shrunk, but release dates have not yet been set. In 1985, Michael J. Fox became one of Hollywood's hottest young actors, especially after he starred as Marty McFly in Back to the Future, a movie that topped the box office and became a classic of American cinema. Fox reprised his role as McFly in two sequels, while continuing to star in the NBC sitcom Family Ties. He also starred in Teen Wolf, Bright Lights Big City, and Casualties of War, which helped him to hone his craft. It was during the production of the comedy Doc Hollywood in 1991 that Fox noticed that his finger was twitching and that he had a creeping pain in his shoulder. These were symptoms of early onset Parkinson's disease. This was a shocking revelation, since most people who get the condition are over 60. After starring in another successful TV show, Spin City, Fox announced his retirement after the fourth season, but he continued to make guest appearances on the show for the rest of its run. He subsequently became an advocate for finding a cure for Parkinson's, and even founded the Michael J. Fox Foundation in 2000 to help fund research. Dolores Hart hit it big in 1957 with a film role opposite Elvis Presley in Loving You. She went on to make 10 more films over the course of five years, including Wild as the Wind, King Creole, and Where the Boys Are. But following a meeting with the Pope while filming a movie in Italy, she had a revelation that sent her down a new religious path. At the height of her career, Hart left acting completely and entered a monastery in Connecticut. Sister Dolores, as she became known, has remained a devout Catholic nun to this day, and her story has been an inspiration for many. In the 1970s and 1980s, Shelley Duvall became famous for her leading roles, which included olive oil in the live-action movie Popeye and in Stanley Kubrick's horror film The Shining, opposite Jack Nicholson. She appeared in the fantasy film Time Bandits, the short comedy horror film Frankenweenie, and also in the comedy movie Roxanne during the 1980s, before she began to settle for secondary roles during the 1990s. After the acting gigs dried up, Duvall moved back to her home state of Texas. Her brother had been diagnosed with spinal cancer, and Duvall made it her priority to be there for him. Now, 20 years later, the actress is finally returning to the big screen in an indie horror film called The Forest Hills, which premiered earlier this year. Brendan Fraser made his film debut in a movie called Dogfight. He had his breakthrough in 1992 with the comedy Encino Man and also the dramatic film School Ties. He gained further prominence for his starring roles in With Honors as a Harvard student and then starred as George of the Jungle before emerging to play the lead in the wildly popular The Mummy Trilogy. He took on other dramatic roles in Gods and Monsters, The Quiet American, and Crash, but also had some fun with roles in Bedazzled and Journey to the Center of the Earth. He continued to act through 2008, but stepped out of the spotlight due to a variety of personal issues, including multiple surgeries and the death of his mother. Fraser also recounted an alleged sexual assault he experienced by the former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association in 2003, which he thinks blacklisted him. It wasn't until 2022 when Fraser made an Oscar-winning comeback performance in The Whale, 13 years after his last major role. Daniel Day-Lewis committed himself to intense method acting, transforming himself into the characters he played, such as Bill the Butcher and Abraham Lincoln. 
to such a degree that his true identity is hard to pinpoint. With The Boxer in 1997, he did more of the same preparations. Following shooting the film, he abruptly went into an acting hiatus. While he was in a semi-retirement state, the actor moved to Florence, Italy to pursue the craft of shoe cobbling. This is an important crossroad in Lewis's career, and the element that helps audiences best understand the mindset of one of the finest actors in Hollywood. Daniel Day-Lewis eventually retired from acting altogether after shooting Phantom Thread in 2017. After an illustrious career in which he won three Best Actor Oscars for his roles in My Left Foot, There Will Be Blood, and Lincoln. Many 90s kids will remember Amanda Bynes on Nickelodeon's All That. Her zany, attention-stealing energy was watchable enough to land her a sketch show of her own, fittingly called The Amanda Show, and a lead role on the TV show What I Like About You. This is also the time she made her film debut in the comedy movie Big Fat Liar. She went on to star in a number of successful films, including What a Girl Wants and the animated film Robots. She received praise for her starring roles in the sports comedy She's the Man, her supporting role in the musical Hairspray, and for co-starring in the comedy drama Easy A alongside Emma Stone. Despite these apparent successes, Bynes tweeted in 2010, I don't love acting anymore, so I've stopped doing it. Just a month later, Bynes tweeted that she had unretired. Then she deleted her Twitter account altogether, only signing up for a new one shortly after. These were the early signs of what became a long and highly publicized series of mental health episodes. In 2013, Bynes entered rehab, and she said she was diagnosed with depression and as being bipolar. Amanda Bynes has continued to struggle through life over the last decade, and it's hard to believe her last movie role was in 2010. Doris Day was a singer and actress whose performances in musicals of the 1950s and comedies of the early 1960s made her a leading Hollywood star. Day's first major film role was in Romance on the High Seas. From there, she made a long series of musicals, including Calamity Jane, Young at Heart, Love Me or Leave Me, and The Pajama Game. Her screen persona, that of an intelligent, wholesome woman of unfailing optimism, came to epitomize the ideal American woman of the 1950s. From 1968 to 1973, she starred in The Doris Day Show, but after the show's fifth season, a 50-year-old Day retired from the spotlight. Day focused her attention on animals, founding organizations like the Doris Day Pet Foundation and the Doris Day Animal League, which she was active in until her death in 2019 at the age of 97. Sean Connery began acting in smaller theater and television productions until his breakout role as James Bond. Although he didn't enjoy the off-screen attention the role gave him, the success of the Bond films brought Connery offers from the best directors of the time, from 007 to The Hunt for Red October. Highlander to Indiana Jones. Connery was an institution in the action-adventure genre, and this continued through the 1990s. His final film was The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which was all the way back in 2003, and the decision to retire from acting was made primarily for health reasons. In 2006, he underwent surgery for a kidney tumor, and there were reports that as he got older, dementia played a part in his decline. In 2020, Sean Connery died in his sleep at his home in the Bahamas at the age of 90. Back in 1937, Ronald Dutch Reagan was a popular baseball radio announcer and local newspaper columnist based in Des Moines, Iowa. It was when he traveled to California to cover the Chicago Cubs spring training camp that he met a talent agent who arranged a screen test at Warner Brothers. The studio was impressed by Reagan's on-screen presence and offered the 26-year-old a contract for $200 per week. By the end of 1939, he had already appeared in 19 films. Reagan later played the role of George Gipp in the film Newt Rockney, All-American before appearing in Santa Fe Trail and King's Row. Reagan continued acting in films like The Voice of the Turtle, Bedtime for Bonzo, The Winning Team, and Cattle Queen of Montana, but he was landing fewer film roles during the 1950s, so his career pivoted to politics. He was elected governor of California in 1966 and was able to turn the state around, leading to a more national role. 
1976, he challenged President Gerald Ford for the nomination, but he would have to wait four more years before a landslide victory over Democratic President Jimmy Carter. Ronald Reagan became the 40th President of the United States and would go on to serve two terms, leaving his acting days firmly behind him. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and maybe even consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching this playlist, and then visit the channel to search the Recollection Road Library. As always, thank you so much for watching.